Hello and good morning, everybody. Happy February vacation week if you are on vacation. I hope you're having a lovely week so far. And if you're not on vacation, I hope you're still having a wonderful week. Thank you for joining us for today's live Zoo to You. Today's Zoo to You is brought to you by NIFA on behalf of the U Fund College Investing Plan. My name is Lexi. I am an educator here at the Stone Zoo. And this morning, I am here with my friend Shadow, the prehensile tailed porcupine. If you have any questions during our chat this morning, you can go ahead and put those in the comments and I will try my best to answer them um, at the end of our chat. So right now you are looking at Shadow and he is our male prehensile tail porcupine. And then over here, we are now zooming in to see Prickles. She is our female prehensile tail porcupine and she is nine years old. She came to us in 2018 from the Minnesota Zoological Garden. And Shadow, who you were looking at at the beginning, was born here at the Stone Zoo in 2013. So as I mentioned, Prickles is nine years old, Shadow is eight years old, and they can live to be around 19. So if you are looking right up at their mouth, you might be able to see Prickles' teeth. So if you know anything about porcupines, you might know that they are a type of rodent and they've got really big front teeth that are a bright orange color. And this is actually iron. Their teeth are covered in iron to help keep them super, super strong. And Shadow is a little too tired to eat that piece of sweet potato, but those sharp teeth would help him to munch through things like raw sweet potato. So our prehensile tailed porcupine friends are native to South American rainforests and they would live in countries like Venezuela, Brazil, Bolivia, and Paraguay. One of my favorite kind of facts about these guys is that they either live in so they either live solitary, meaning they live alone, or they can also live in pairs. So you might notice that they currently live in a pair, and that is because they were paired together through something called a species survival plan or an SSP. If you've watched our Zoo to You videos before, this is nothing new. But if this is your first time joining us, a species survival plan is something that put pairs two animals together, like Shadow and Prickles, and we have the hope that they would end up having babies. And this is to help keep a healthy and diverse population of the species in zoos. So these two have been successful. They've had two babies so far. Their most recent baby was born in May of 2021, but that baby has since gone off on their own because that is what they would do in the wild. Another one of my favorite things about them is when babies are born, they are really tiny and they're a orangey kind of pink color. And I like to say they're like the size and shape of a sweet potato, if that kind of put things in perspective for you. They are also covered in really soft quills that will harden up much like the ones you're seeing on Shadow um, within a few weeks. And when they're born, they're able to walk within days and climb within days, which I think is also really, really cool considering how small they are when they are born. So Shadow is still a little too tired to eat that sweet potato, but our porcupine friends are herbivores, meaning that they like to eat lots of fruits and veggies. They do not like to eat meat. So in the wild, they would be eating things like leaves and flowers and roots. Here at the zoo, they get lots of fruits and vegetables. And Shadow's absolute favorite is, in fact, sweet potato. He can eat so much sweet potato and he gets so excited and his drool will turn orange. It is so fun to watch him devour his favorite food. So these type, this type of porcupine, they are an arboreal species, meaning that they like to live high up in the trees. 
And something new I just recently learned about them is they like to move to a new tree every night to find a different food source, which I think is really cool. And they really like to try to stay high up in the trees. So if they can stay up there and move over from tree to tree way up high, they much prefer that. But if not, they will venture down the tree to go find another tree to move up. Now, you might know that here at Stone Zoo, we also have a different species of porcupine. We also have North American porcupines. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the differences between the two. So prehensile tail porcupines are considered to be more arboreal. So they spend more time up in the trees. They'll rarely ever come down. North American porcupines may come down a little bit more often. You can also notice that our prehensile tail porcupine friends have a really long tail. And our North American porcupine friends have a really short little tail. It's not very long. And also, prehensile tail porcupines are much smaller than our North American porcupine friends. A prehensile tail porcupine will top out at around four or five pounds but a North American porcupine will get up to about 40 pounds. So it's a pretty big difference. So now I'm just gonna talk a little bit about some of their adaptations and then I'm gonna take some questions. So feel free to put any questions if you'd like in the chat. But I'm gonna talk about their quills here for a second. They are completely covered in quills. And one of a really common misconceptions with porcupines is that they can shoot their quills. And I'm here to tell you that they cannot do that. But they can lose their quills, much like people can lose their hair, like it can fall out, we shed our hair and things like that. Porcupines will also shed their quills. And if they will shake off, they might fling a quill, but they're not shooting it. It just kind of was a loose quill that just fell out. And of course, they do grow back, much like our hair will. And when they feel threatened, what they'll do is they'll stand up on their hind legs, they'll stomp their feet, they'll raise their quills up and make themselves look nice and big. And they will also make a high-pitched noise, which I think is really interesting. But they don't have any quills on their bellies. It's really hard to tell because Shadow's in a really nice, comfortable position right now. But they don't have any quills on their belly. So what's most important is that if they feel threatened, that they are showing their back to their predators and they're not letting their predators near anywhere near their bellies. And those quills are really easy to detach from their bodies. So if a predator, such as a jaguar, tried to eat a porcupine, those quills would fall off really easily and stick right into that predator. And those quills have microscopic barbs. So what that means is that when a, for example, jaguar were to attack one and a quill got in the jaguar, it would be really, really difficult for that quill to be then pulled out. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about was their little feet. You might notice that they've got those really long claws and they also have really thickly padded feet and this helps them to hold on to the tree nice and tight so they can feel nice and safe. And you may have guessed it, that's also what their tail is for. The prehensile tail allows them to kind of wrap it up in the tree and stay nice and balanced. Did we have any questions come in through the chat? We did. We had a question from Brenda. Brenda wants to know if you were petting a shadow or another prehensile tail porcupine and going with the quills, would you still get pricked? Oh, that is a great question, Brenda. Thank you so much for asking that. I know it can look really tempting with those quills kind of laid back like that. Much like a hedgehog, you would be able to kind of pet them. However, with these quills having those microscopic barbs on them, you still run a very high risk of getting a quill stuck in your hand. So that is definitely not a safe thing to do. But I understand why you kind of think that with them being pressed down like that, it looks kind of smooth. Yeah, and in some places you can even see that the quills are sometimes not always going in the same direction. So I think there'd be a pretty good chance of accidentally getting quilled. Which Absolutely. Which does not feel good. And we had another question from Derek. 
who wants to know, do these porcupines use their tails in a special way? Awesome, thank you so much for your question, Derek. So yes, they do use their tails in a special way. So their tails, they're called a prehensile tail. And what that means is they're able to use their tail and specifically for these guys where they're arboreal, they like to wrap it around a tree branch and it helps them stay nice and balanced. And also, people do often ask, with them being able to grab onto things like the tree branch, would they be able to hang by their tails? And they probably wouldn't be doing that. Their tails aren't meant to hold their entire body weight. They're mainly just there to help them stay nice and balanced when they are perched up in the tree. And while we're talking about quills, I noticed there are some longer quills or hairs sticking out on Shadow's um, legs and in places on his body. Would you be able to tell us a little bit about those special hairs? Absolutely. So those are called guard hairs. And what those do is they are long, really thin hairs that stick out just a little bit longer than their quills. So if something were to come by and brush Shadow, that would kind of signal to him that he may need to kind of go on the defense and put his quills up so he can make sure that he stays nice and safe. And is this an endangered species? No, this is not an endangered species. They are actually considered to be of least concern, which means that their population is doing really well. With many concerns in the rainforest where they're native to, there is lots of things like deforestation going on that does disrupt their habitat. But as of right now, their population in the wild is doing really well. And do they have any predators? Yes, they do have some predators. Their predators are going to be bigger carnivores in the rainforest, like jaguars, like I had mentioned earlier. And as we're getting ready to wrap up, I'm just kind of giving everybody a good view of his ear. If you're looking closely, you'll even see that right around the edges of their eyes and their ears, they have quills. So they are very much covered in quills to defend themselves. And I also see we've had a lot of comments talking about his nose and how cute he is. Lexi, do you have any comments about Shadow's nose? His nose is definitely a nose that one might consider boopable. Um, it is very cute. It kind of looks like <laughs> a pig nose a little bit, but they do have a really, really good sense of smell. So that is why it is so big and so prominent on their face there. It is one of their best adaptations and senses. All right, I think we are just getting ready to wrap up. So thank you all so much for tuning in to this morning's Zoo to You. Thank you to Mifa for being our sponsor this morning. And thank you to our guests of honor, Shadow and Prickles. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.